it, it did start, yes, it did. Okay, so uh, parentheses around the top, 11 squared plus 13 squared minus 15 squared. Close the parentheses, divide in parentheses 22 times 13. Okay, I got 0 0.227272. Immediately I apply cosine inverse to it. Do not delete, do not truncate, just recall the previous answer. And it's approximately 76.86 degrees. Wait, wasn't supposed to multiply 22 times 13 also times 11? Yeah, I multiplied 2 times uh, 11, I wrote 22. Oh, okay. I was lazy. No, Sorry. So we got that C is 76.86 degrees. Now we go back. Since I know this as 76. 0.86 degrees. Correct my numbers. Is, it, is this okay? Did anyone else get this number? Okay. So now, moving forward, it doesn't matter if you would like to determine, we would like to use log signs from here on, or um, log cosines. It doesn't matter. I prefer log cosines to tell the truth. But you can say it's too long, I want log signs. You tell me what you want to do. With law of cosines? Okay, very good. So then let's say we want to determine B. If we want to determine angle B, then we have to start with 11 squared equals 15 squared plus 13 squared. 11 squared equals 15 squared plus 13 squared minus 2 times 15 times 13 times cosine B. And once we determine B, we're done because we subtract from 180 A, uh, B and C and we get A. We don't have to do anything else for angle A. So one more time, let's do this one more time together. If we want to determine angle B, we start with the opposite. 11 squared equals 15 squared plus 13 squared minus 2 times 15 times 13 times cosine B. So therefore, from here, we have cosine B equals 15 squared plus 13 squared minus 11 squared over 2 times 15 times 13. Okay, parentheses, 15 squared plus 13 squared minus 11 squared divided by 30 times 13. And I got 0.7, nice. Okay, second cosine of the previous answer. And my answer is 45.57 degrees. So B is approximately 45.57 degrees. In view of that, can anyone give us A? So A will be 180 minus 45.57 and minus 76.86. And once you give me that answer, we're done with this. How much? Thank you very much. So in this particular example, we use law of cosines. We were given all three sides. We could not use law of sines, even if we wanted to. Uh, and we determined um, all angles. Uh, let's look at... Um, If you have all angles, you can use law of signs. Just all three sides? No. No. no, because if you have all angles, you only have the numerators. Mm -hmm. and you, won't, you will never be able to determine. You have three so variables. Possible. Yeah, you will have three variables. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wait, 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 wait. With law of cosines, if you have all the angles, you can determine three sides. How you determine? You have um, you have three variables. You will write three equations in three variables.
I've never looked at a situation like that, so how will it look like? Just for one second. So it will be something like this, right? a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2ab cosine a. So this is given, but you don't have anything else. Uh, then you have b squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine b. And then c squared, a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. So you only have these. So you will create a system of three linear equation, uh, three um, nonlinear equations in three variables. I normally should work, but I don't know. I don't know how. So I can't solve any of these equations for anything. Maybe when I move these terms to the other side and I keep negative two a b on this side, maybe I'm able to eliminate and create a new equation. I have no idea. I've never experienced that, so I've never even thought about it. But if you come across one, maybe we can look at it. I mean, I can make one up and look at those, but I don't want to spend the time right now. So you just make one up. But without any information about the sides, I'm not sure. But this is how we would look like, the system. OK. I would like us to uh, look at a word problem, a real life application of what we just looked at. So yes? Where are we at? At the end of, this is 10.2. Yes. So we finished 10.1 and 10.2, but I would like to uh, finish them with, uh, and then we start chapter 9. And I would like to. Um, us to um, come up with a word problem. Okay, here it is. A surveyor has taken the measurements shown in the figure, figure 14. So angle 70, um, measure 900, this side, this height 800. Find the distance across the lake. So we want to determine the distance between point A and point B. So 62 on page 786. So this is what we have. 70 degrees. We have 800 feet. And we have 900 feet. So we're asked to find measure X. How are we going to do that? So we're going to write that x squared equals 800 squared plus 900 squared minus 2 times 800 times 900 times cosine. Very good. So it's the opposite side of the angle. So x squared equals 800 squared plus 900 squared minus 2 times 800 times 900 times cosine, 70 degrees. So of course, all we have to do is take the square root. So x will be, yes, yes. We are not going to write plus or minus in this case. We normally do, but in this case, we don't. I'm going to have to tell them that something is not right here. OK, so the square root, parentheses, 800 squared plus 900 squared. Uh, minus 2, uh, 2 times 8, so it's 1600, times 900, times cosine, 70 degrees. Close the parentheses for 70 degrees. Co close the parentheses for the square root, and enter. So the distance is roughly 978.51. 9. 78.51, and it was in feet. So law of cosines, 
allowed us to determine um, the distance between those two points. Okay, so let's go back. Let me show you where we are, because I know it's a lot. I have to keep it on straight myself. So we're going to start uh, right now the analytic trig, and we're not going to solve trig equations uh, right this moment. We're going to practice simplifying um, trig expressions. So this is not what we start with right this moment. We can't. Okay. So what do we know so far? What trig identities we have learned so far? So this is chapter 9. We learned that sine squared alpha plus cosine squared alpha equals... Excellent. We learned that tangent squared alpha plus 1 equals... Remember, tangent and secant are... Yes, secant squared alpha, they are together. And what about 1 plus cotangent squared alpha? Cosecant squared alpha. And we also know that sine alpha equals plus or minus the square root of... Very good, 1 minus cosine squared. And cosine alpha plus or minus the square root of 1 minus sine squared alpha. And of course, we know all the other the definitions of the trig functions. We know tangent is sine over cosine. We know secant is 1 over cosine, and so on and so forth. So our first step here is simplifying trig expressions. After that, we will prove trig identities. Okay. Use the fundamental identities. Use the fundamental identities um, to fully simplify the expressions. Use the fundamental identity plus tangent inside of a cosine, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to fully simplify the given algebra uh, trigonometric expression. Choose anything that you would like to see. Okay, so we want to start with 14. Very good. Well, I was expecting uh, to start with this, but it's fine. No, 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 that's fine. Yes, thank you, thank you. Okay, so we said 14, so this is tangent x divided by cosecant squared x plus tangent x over secant squared x. Everything is multiplied by 1 plus tangent x over 1 plus cotangent x, and then minus 1 over cosine squared x. Don't get scared. Please don't get scared of trig identities or trig um, expressions. Okay, so obviously this is a sum of two fractions. It's multiplied by another fraction, and then we subtract one over cosine squared. So far so good? In most cases I would say keep it simple. But when I say by, what I mean by that is use sine and cosine. That's what I mean by keeping simple. But it depends on the expression. So, for example, what I would like to do here is try to see if I can simplify this a little bit. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But I definitely see that in this piece, I can pull out tangent and see what happens next. So that's what I'm going to do first. Tangent is a common factor. So I'm going to write the tangent x. And now, careful, let's discuss this. What is left? What is one of a cosecant squared? Sine squared. Sine squared. Excellent. What is one of a secant squared? Oh, we are on the right track. So this is sine squared plus cosine squared. Very nice. This, of course, I'm going to try to make it simple. Sine over cosine. 1 plus sine x over cosine x. And 1 plus cosine x over sine x. 
You could say, why don't you change tangent into cotangent or cotangent? That's very possible. I don't disagree if you say that. So then minus, I'm going to keep that for now as 1 over cosine squared. And let's see what happens next. I know what sine squared plus cosine squared is. That's our first fundamental trig identity. What is it? Gone. Gone. So then we have tangent x. And now let's see what this is. So the numerator has denominator cosine, least common denominator, and the top is cosine x plus sine x. Do we agree with this step? This is just for the top. Then the denominator has sine x, but the numerator is sine x plus cosine x. I will still keep this as is. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, so I'm just carrying it over. Okay. Now I see that I divide two fractions. How do I divide two fractions? With the denominator. Excellent. So I'm going to copy. So I have tangent x, and then I'm going to put that in correct order, sine x plus cosine x over cosine x times sine x over sine x plus cosine x, and then minus. Still, I don't know what to do with that yet. It can wait for a while. I'll get to it. And I like this. 1 and 1. I can simplify only factors. I took a factor away from sine plus cosine mm -hmm. and another factor, the same sine plus cosine. And now I have tangent times sine of sine over cosine, but how much what is sine over cosine? Mm -hmm. And how much is tan tangent times tangent? Mm -hmm. Very good. So for now we have tangent squared x. And now let's think what is this? 1 over cosine squared is secant squared. Good. So this will be sine over cosine, and this will be 1 over cosine squared. So I'm going to look on the side and see maybe if I change this. Don't write anything. We're talking about it. That is even nicer. However, I have a second option. Here's the second option. Tangent squared is secant squared minus 1, or this one. So this is an or. But tangent squared can be replaced by secant squared minus 1. So secant squared x minus 1 minus secant squared x, negative 1. Another option would be sine squared over cosine squared minus 1 over cosine squared, and that would simplify still to negative 1. And we can go that route if you'd like to see it, of course. Would you like to see this one? Just in case you are not using this identity. Would you like to see that that way? Yes or no? Yes? Okay, perfect. Let's take a look. So, sine squared minus 1 over cosine squared, right? Because they have the same denominator. I write sine squared minus 1. But I will factor out negative 1 and change the top into 1 minus sine squared x over cosine squared x because I know what this equals to. What? Cosine squared. Very good. So if this is negative in front, cosine squared over cosine squared, this is 1 with minus in front is negative 1. Of course, the same result we obtained with the other trig identity. Yes, it required some work, but nothing major. It was nothing that we did not know from the identities. Would you like to choose another or we move on to the next step? Do you think we need another example of using fundamental identities to simplify this? Yes, very good. So please choose. Now, for example, if you uh, choose something like this, all you have to remember is that tangent is odd or even. There are only two even functions. Oh, only the ones that have cosine and nothing else in them. 
So only cosine and, and secant. So tangent is not even, cotangent is not even, sine is not even. So tangent of negative x would be negative tangent x. Cotangent negative x would be negative cotangent x. So one, two, three negatives will still be negative. So this would be so on and so forth. So, so if you think of that. If you think of this, I have no idea. It looks awful. That one looks awful. All right? All those products, I don't know what we come up with. So you choose. So uh, 12 uh, looks insane, but I'm assuming that it's going to be easy to simplify. I don't know, but the way it looks right now, it's awful. So which one? The awful one. The awful one. Okay, fine. <laughs> Let's try it. Let's try it. So never ever be afraid of any of these, no matter how they look, because Everything revolves around the same identities. Okay? So let's give it a shot. So we want to look at uh, number 12. And that's on 704. So I see negative sine negative x times cosine x times secant x times cosecant x times tangent x, really, over cotangent, is there anything that they forgot? Or is everything in there already? Okay. Perfect. So, first of all, we know that sine negative x is negative sine x, so this will go away. So we have sine x, we have cosine x, we have secant, which is 1 over cosine x, we have cosecant, which is 1 over sine x, we have tangent, which is sine x over cosine x. And we have cotangent, which is cosine x over sine x. So we'll see what we can simplify. So what we did was, uh, sine is an odd function, so it's negative sine x. With minus in front, it became positive. Then sine and cosine. I went back to secant, which is 1 over cosine, cosecant, which is 1 over sine, and I replaced tangent by sine over cosine in the hope that something will go away. So look at that. These two go away. These two go away. And there is sine over cosine. OK, fine. So then sine x over cosine x times sine x over cosine x. The top is sine squared. The bottom is cosine squared. But this is tangent times tangent. So it really simplifies quite nicely. Initially, it looked off. Before we get to verify identities, I would like us to look at this section in which, let's read, for the following exercises, simplify the first trig expression by writing the simplified form in terms of the second one. It sounds difficult. No, it's not. So, they're giving us an expression. And they say, simplify this using that. Simplify tangent in terms of secret. Uh, simplify all this expression in terms of secant x and tangent x. Um, simplify all this expression in terms of tangent over b. I don't know. It can be difficult. So let's choose any expression to present it in terms of the second one. 20. Okay. Very good. So let's look at 20. In 20 we have, on page 704, we are given 1 over 1 minus cosine x minus cosine x divided by 1 plus cosine x. And all they want us to use at the end, only cosecant x. At any power, at, of any angle, but nothing else. So whatever it is, just in terms of cosecant x. Perfect. We are subtracting two fractions. What do I need to do <clears throat> whenever I add or subtract fractions that do not have the same denominator? Finally, 
is the LCD. What is the LCD of this, of these two? The product, right? Very good. The product of those two. So let's write that. So the least common denominator, 1 minus cosine x times 1 plus cosine x. So what does the top need for the first one? Careful. 1 plus cosine x. Very good. And what does, see what we've studied two months ago. Perfect. So can anyone dictate the numerator so I can write it? Very good. So we see that cosine x and minus cosine x go away. So what we have at the top is 1 plus cosine squared x divided by 1 minus cosine squared x. Please, Bailey, go ahead. Say it again. Yes, yes. We're going to change the denominator to sine squared, of course. So this is that's why I multiplied it, because normally we don't multiply the factors in the denominator, but in this case I had to. So 1 plus cosine squared x divided by sine squared x. And now, can anyone tell us what to do next? Yes, separate it into two fractions. Awesome. Well done. 1 over sine squared x plus cosine squared x over sine squared x. Awesome. So what is the first piece? The first piece is very good. What is oops, oops, oops. what is this? Careful. Okay. And we know something very important. We know something about so remember we are asked to keep only cosecant, nothing else in the final answer. So cosecant is okay, cotangent is not okay. But here's what we know that cotangent squared <laughs> excellent so that is cosecant squared plus cosecant squared x minus 1 so therefore 2 cosecant squared x minus 1 is the final so we wrote the first expression in terms of the second. Quiet, please. OK, now we're ready. Unless you have questions, please. Any questions here? Yes? I thought the thing at the side was the final answer. That's what we're supposed to get. No, we were supposed to get anything depending on that cosecant x and nothing else. Any power, any angle, but only cosecant x is the treat function in the final answer. We could not have any other function, any other three function in the final answer, but cosecant. Perfect. Now we are ready, I think, to verify identities. So here they are. And then we can consider 9.1 finished. So is this the one where you solve it and you get the same answer on the one side? Yes. Excellent. Yes. So this is why we did what we just did in 9.1 to be able to prove any identity you want. So please choose. Let me zoom in. So we want to work on 36? OK. I want you to pay attention to the technique, the technique of uh, proving identities. Please do not um, mess it up. Very important. So please follow what I'm doing step by step. Okay, so we picked, uh, you said uh, 36. Very good. 36 on page 705. Ready? 36. I copy it. Secant squared of negative x minus tangent squared x. Everything divided by tangent x times. 
2 plus 2 tangent x over 2 plus 2 cotangent x minus 2 sine squared x equals cosine 2x. Cosine 2x and this particular identity should not be here because we haven't talked about cosine 2x. But that's okay. I will show you that, that identity. Since we picked the problem, I, I really would like to go ahead with it. Okay. So when we prove identities, we have two sides and the equal symbol in between. We have to make a decision where to start. Do not write the equal symbol between them. I can give credit if you do that. So you have to decide, do I, do I start with the left-hand side or I start with the right-hand side? If I start with the left-hand side, I don't look at anything and just simplify the left-hand side to the maximum. And then say, look, I got to the left, to the right-hand side, they are the same. Or I start with the left-hand side. I don't look at the left and the right-hand side. I simplify it fully and at the end I say, look, I got the same thing. Third possibility, I simplify both sides, not with the equal symbol between them. I simplify the left-hand side fully, I simplify the right-hand side fully, and then I say, look, they simplify to the same number or quantity or expression. Do not put equal symbol between what you're doing on the left and what you're doing on the right. So now, which of these two sides we should start with because it has a lot of work? Right, so obviously we have to start with the left-hand side. So here's how we perform the steps. Left-hand side equals. So it's very clear. We all agreed that the left-hand side is a complicated situation. The right-hand side is just one simple function. And um, we start with the most complicated side. Perfect. We know that secant squared of negative x, since secant, secant is an even function, there is no point in that's just a distraction, that's just some noise. So then secant squared x minus tangent squared x over tangent x times 2 plus 2 tangent x, 2 plus 2 cotangent x minus, leave that alone for now, sine squared x. Perfect. So now, yes, Imran is already way ahead of us. I love that. So we already know that secant squared minus tangent squared, secant squared minus tangent squared, secant squared minus tangent squared is? Excellent. So this is 1 over tangent x times, I will simplify factoring out the 2 from the top, 1 plus tangent x over 2, 1 plus cotangent x, minus 2 sine squared x. Okay. Simplify, simplify. I will try to simplify this, going back to sine and cosine, and I can change this into sine over cosine and flip it, because it's cotangent. Cosine x over sine x times 1 plus sine x over cosine x, 1 plus cosine, we've done this 3 minutes ago, 20 minutes ago, sine x, minus, I still don't know what to do with this just yet, okay, I'm still working on the product, try to simplify the product, so I still have cosine x over sine x times the least common denominator in the numerator, is cosine x. Again, I have cosine x plus sine x. Again, I have sine x plus cosine x divided by sine x minus 2 sine squared x. Okay, cosine x over sine x times the numerator, I'll put it in the correct order, sine x plus cosine x over cosine x times sine x over sine x plus cosine x minus 2 sine squared x. Luckily, these two go away. The cosine goes away with the cosine. The sine goes away with the sine. So what is all this product? 1 
minus 2 sine squared x. We don't know this, and I will show it to you right this moment. This is indeed cosine 2x, and it equals the right-hand side. How we get from here here? Give me one more minute, and I'll show you. We don't know this yet. We don't know the, um, uh, the uh, double angle formulas or the half angle formulas. We, they, it should not be here, because we didn't get to that. We haven't talked about it yet. But, but since it's here, now I have to talk about it. OK. Could you go back a little bit? Please? Sorry about that. So now I have to show you how we get from 1 minus 2 sine squared to cosine squared. And that's what I'm going to do now. Is this OK, everyone? OK. We have several identities that we will have to look at, and this is a good opportunity to start. So if we're asked to find the sum, the sine of a sum of angles, this is a formula or an identity. Sine A cosine B plus sine B cosine A. If we're asked to find the sign of a difference of angles, then there is only minor change, meaning the two terms have minus in between. The same thing for cosine A plus B, which is different, cosine A, cosine B, but minus sine A, sine B. So if there is a minus here, However, the signs are changed, are opposite in the formula for cosine. So these are the sum formulas, sine of a sum of angles, cosine of a sum of angles. Since we are here, I'm going to give the tangent, and then I'll show uh, this correspondence and how we get from left to right. So here's the formula for tangent A plus B. Well, this one is a fraction, which is tangent A plus tangent B over 1 minus the product of tangent A times tangent B. And if we have minus here, then we'll have minus here and plus here. So now I would like us to go back to the formula for cosine. And please tell me what will happen if both these two angles, if both are the same. 2 cosine cosine 2a. In other words, a plus a. Can you please give us the formula? Cosine squared a minus sine squared a. Perfect. So this is one option, option number one. But there is an option number two, and there is an option number three. If we replace cosine squared in terms of first sine squared, what would you write? 1 minus sine squared. So 1 minus sine squared minus sine squared will be 1 minus 2 sine squared a. So cosine twice the angle is 1 minus 2 sine squared of the angle. And there is a third option for the same formula. When we replace sine squared by 1 minus, good. So then we have cosine squared minus 1 plus cosine squared. So 2 cosine squared a minus 1. But in this case, in this particular identity that we picked, that was the formula. So cosine what we had, we had cosine squared minus sine x was 1 minus 2 sine squared x. But this doesn't belong here. It does not belong in 2.1, uh, 9.1. OK, we have um, about uh, six minutes left. So let's look at, since we already shown have shown th these identities, uh, let's take a look at. Um, so all this is in 9.2.
Thank you for choosing that identity. It is thus 2.9.2. Very good. For the following exercises, find the exact value from 4 through 19. I love it when you choose because it tells me what you think is maybe more interesting than more difficult, maybe. I don't know. So for the following exercise, find the exact value. Rewrite in terms of sine and cosine. Uh, find, simplify the given expression. Okay, we want to start with the P. So for the following exercise, simplify the given expression. Not difficult because secant is one of a cosine. So that's all I have to determine, cosine of that. And then put it in. Perfect. So let's start with 15. Identities. Identities. Oh, yes. Uh, these, this, these are the sum and the difference formulas. Of course, sine of a sum, sine of a difference, cosine of a sum, cosine of a difference. These we're going to get to a little bit later. These are the double angle. As you see, cosine twice a. We also have sine twice a, and we also have tangent twice a. But I had to present these so we can get to the one that we wanted to look at. So we clarify the previous identity. But we're going to get to these again. So we picked 15 on page 718, in which we have secant of pi over 2 minus theta. It says simplify, for the following it says simplify the given expressions. Okay. I don't care about secant, but I do care about cosine. So this is pi over 2 minus theta, because a secant is 1 over cosine. And I know the formula for cosine of a difference. Cosine of, I'm going to write it again, a minus b equals cosine a, cosine b, but plus sine a, sine b. This is the formula for the sum of an angle, cosine of a difference of sum of, a, of angles. Okay, so in our case, a is pi over 2, and b is theta. All I have to do is just follow this. I'll say cosine pi over 2, cosine theta, plus sine pi over 2, sine theta. I guess, and then I'll, I'll put it back into the fraction. But I know that cosine pi over 2 is... Right, right, cosine pi over 2 is 0. So this term is gone. How much is sine pi over 2? So then the answer is sine theta. Excellent. So then this is 0, and this is sine theta. Therefore, the final answer would be 1 over sine theta, which is cosecant theta. I'm glad you're amazed. Any questions? <laughs>